Hey there. In this first video, what we want to talk about is the problem of toxic work environments and how to diagnose the cultural health of your work environment. The biggest mistake that I see people make with this is they believe that things have to get terrible before they take action to create a healthy workplace culture. And so this looks like people come to me and they say, well, other people have real discrimination. Other people have real harassment. My boss is just mean or my coworker is just rude and mine's not real. And, and this ends up becoming like walking on a broken leg, right? Or at least walking on a pebble that's creating a blister that's really going to interfere with your walking and not taking the pebble out of your shoe. And the reason that most people do this is they think that the only alternative and the only way to create a healthy workplace culture is to go find a place where it already exists. And that is a false assumption, right? That is a wrong um, assumption that most of us make. It is actually possible to create the workplace culture that you want um, but the, the first way you have to do that is to diagnose where things are now and the level of the problem that you have now, and then to really take seriously if there is a problem. So most people know someone who has left a job or left a career because of sexual or because of a toxic work environment. And so I always use the example of sexual harassment um, because we have a lot of statistics about this now and it's sort of my issue that resonates with me. But, um, and so we know from statistics after the Me Too movement that one in five women estimate leaves a career because of sexual harassment. That is a huge number. And this number gets worse when you take into consideration protected characteristics like race, uh, sexual orientation, physical or mental ability, um, gender identity, all of these other protected characteristics, if you consider those, things get much worse than even the sexual harassment number, which kind of is an outrageous um, statistic. So if you're thinking about people that you know who just have left jobs because of a toxic work environment, not even discrimination, not harassment, this problem is endemic. It is a huge issue in our society. So I care about this, and this is a major problem to me. I care about sexual harassment because my experience is early in my legal career, I got my dream job working at a civil rights law firm. And um, the problem was that I was representing women in sexual harassment cases, and I was being sexually harassed at the same time. Uh, and I was humiliated by this problem. I thought, you know, um, I was too tough, too smart to be someone who experienced sexual harassment and didn't know how to deal with it. I had been harassed in the past, but I had never had a situation where I couldn't just address it in the moment. I had one experience in the past where I kicked somebody, right? So I knew I could handle this. I was a lawyer representing people in sexual harassment cases. So I for sure thought I should know how to handle it, and I didn't. And so I remember I would, I would walk to work in the morning and I would listen to podcasts and I could hear my heart beating over the sound of the podcast because I was so afraid to go to work. I would work late and my harasser would work late and make inappropriate comments to me or touch me. And it, I was terrified about work, but I didn't want to leave. So I went to employment lawyers and I said, other employment lawyers, and I said, um, I know how we sue people when they get fired because of discrimination or um, because of harassment or they're forced to quit, but how do we teach people how to stop harassment and stay in their job? And basically what I heard was, we don't know how to do that. Um, things are really sexist and you just have to deal with it. And I thought there has to be a better answer than that, right? Like the human brain has invented the iPhone. There has to be a way for us to figure out how to create a healthy culture, how to just stop harassment at work. Um, 
but, and, and like, and so like, but I couldn't find the answer. So I searched and searched and it was more than a year before I found tools that worked. And what it ultimately came down to was shifting power dynamics um, and understanding my own power in the workplace when I didn't believe I had had it and really questioning that belief and shifting it. And so what ended up happening was I was able to encounter the situation in such a different way that my harasser apologized and then and stopped touching me and then we worked together safely for years after. So um, I think it's easy to believe that this couldn't happen to us, that it only happens to smart or to weak people, stupid people, um, that it only happens in evil companies. Uh, and the reality is that sexual harassment toxic workplace behavior, discrimination happens in any company and it can happen to any of us. Um, so when we're looking at this as an employer side issue, it costs at least one fifth of an employee's salary to replace them. One incident of rudeness, the research shows, results in a 25% decreased accuracy and productivity. And so if you look at the one in five statistic, just of sexual harassment alone, this is like a huge investment that employers are making in toxic workplace cultural health issues. Um, and then for employees, it's kind of worse so if an employee feels forced to leave a work environment, they have wage loss, and it's usually about one-fifth of their salary. They lose seniority. Uh, often there are health concerns. People come to me quite often and say, uh, I drive into my work in the morning. I have a panic attack. I go to my doctor, and I have extremely high blood pressure, and I've noticed that my hair is falling out now. I'm so afraid and stressed out at work. And this is like a, an enormous, takes an enormous toll on somebody in terms of their physical health even, and their ability to get back into a job, to a healthy job, right? And so a lot of times what people say, what people do is they leave one job and they think they're going to find a place where the cultural health is better. So they go from job to job to job because the reality is that we live in a culture that has discrimination, that has um, harassment, that like this exists in many places and it's not just evil companies where this exists. Uh, and so what happens is that especially uh, people with, with non-dominant characteristics, women, uh, people of color, people with disabilities, um, people, trans people, um, people with characteristics that are stigmatized in society end up becoming career refugees. They just go to all these jobs and never gain traction in the job. So they're losing an enormous amount of wage loss. And then we even end up blaming ourselves and thinking there's something wrong with us. But we know from the prevalence of this, we know from the statistics that there's not something wrong with us. This is just a problem that we need to solve. Uh, so a lot of times people ask me, what about false reporting? and especially of sexual harassment. And the reality is that around two to 8% of reports, as with reports of any kind of problem, there are about two to 8% of false reports. And so that is a reality. But we also know that 25% of men self-report engaging in sexual coercion by the end of college. So we know that there is a pervasive cultural issue of men uh, being taught that they can use coercion to dominate a workplace and to dom or to dominate college or to dominate other genders, right? And so really the, the amount of false reports that are shown are far less than what we know is an issue actually happening. And, and that's an extreme, right? This 25% is an extreme of actual assault and sexual sexual coercion. When you look at just uh, unprofessional bad behavior, it's very likely much worse. 
And then we know that around 75% of harassment and discrimination incidents go unreported. So um, that's a huge number of people being afraid to talk about the cultural health of their workplace, to talk honestly about it, to identify problems. Um, around 75% of employees who report harassment or discrimination experience retaliation. So these are the problems that we're facing when we are focused on, is it bad enough? When we're waiting for something to be bad enough, you see lack of reporting, you see low productivity, you see um, reduced efficiency at work, and then you see employees going from job to job to job, hoping to find a workplace culture that feels inclusive, that feels welcoming, that where they feel like they're being heard and respected. So what we need to do instead is focus on creating active cultural health where we can have open conversations about any problem that comes up, even if it's a minor problem and take it seriously and address it. Um, it's easy to minimize the seriousness of this issue, but when you're seeing one in five women leave careers because of it, and you're seeing much worse problems when it comes to other protected characteristics, uh, we know that this is an issue that we need to take seriously. When someone shares with us that they're having a problem at work, we need to take action related to that and encourage them to get help. Um, it's not a minor issue. It doesn't have to get worse before we get somebody into a healthy cultural place. So in video two, we're, I know this is like the bleak video. This is the like, please take this seriously video. And then in video two, we're going to talk about what is possible when you do focus on healthy culture in your work.